Why does the phone have to be telling me things all the time? Uh, I'm sure there's different ways that you can get on there and disable alerts. I don't want to hear any more about the COVID. I don't care what the weather is. I was just outside. I know what the weather is. But every time, it's always putting up all these alerts. But being old and having a limited amount of time on this earth, I do not like to learn things that I'm not interested in. And I'm not a gadget guy. I'm not interested in gadgets. But I walked a little. I walked a little further, further this morning. It's my fault for turning the thing on. Uh, but uh, I'll try to ignore that, unless it keeps doing that. <laughs> I don't know what I'll do. But uh, yeah, I walked yesterday. I did a, a, a video yesterday. Since I try to do a video every day. I didn't put it up for a reason because I was like, uh, I had a good idea. On the surface, it checks out. Okay, because I, I was feeling like, you know, I was feeling like this place was on fire and I needed to run the hell out of it. And I, in the, in the video, I said, I feel like I'm on fire. It's not even like the place is on fire. It's, I feel like I'm on fire and I need to run out of here and go jump in a rain barrel. So I was like, well, you know, there's one way I could get out of here immediately. And um, that would be to move in for the summer with my brother in my folks' house. Now, he's very poor. He doesn't have any hot water. Uh, so instead of paying rent to people that I hate or a guy that I hate instead of living in a building with people that I hate instead of not being able to sit outside I can move into the suburbs and you know I'll have a room set aside for me and I can you know get him help him fix up his house I don't know I haven't asked what I, I think he goes over to the bed bug house to uh, wash clothes but uh, he just needs like a washer or a dryer or something like that. But instead of giving money to somebody that I hate who doesn't need it, I could be giving money to somebody that I love and fixing their whole damn house up and spend a nice summer sitting out in a suburban setting in a quiet neighborhood full of old people mostly to hear him describe it. And uh, all I would have to do is live in my folks house just for a few months I'd be out of here but you know I wasn't sure you know it's my family my family everybody says well my family is crazy and there's different levels to think there's levels to this shit isn't that what the rappers say uh, you know, I mean, on the surface, it all checks out. It's like, I'm out of here instantly. You know, all I got to do is get a mattress, box springs, and a chair to sit in. That's all I got now. I won't have any hot water, but I'm not the cleanliest soul in the world anyway. And we'll work to get hot water because I'll have, needs like two grand or something like that. I'll have He's already got a little bit of money saved, and I got a shitload of money, you know, and it's not even going to put a dent. I'll still have, what, enough money to move out of his place, which, of course, I do not want to live there at, at all. It's just a good temporary solution, and he just, you know, he's, uh, his, his dog just died, so, you know, he's still in that grieving process, so it would be good for him. And I was thinking, well, you know, I could get that bullshit with my sister straightened out because it's kind of funny. Like, my sister used to come over here and I'd cook her fish and I would be the guy fishing. And I just, like, handed off my fishing buddy to my brother. And then so my brother gets to go fishing and I don't because, uh, you know, my, my buddy would call me up and he'd be like, I got a couple hours for you. You want to go somewhere? And, I, you know. I was getting more fucked up and more fucked up. And I said, I got to have a night to go to sleep and stuff. And I said, but if you want somebody to go fishing at the drop of a hat. So I played matchmaker. So I handed, sort of handed him off as a fishing buddy. Since I don't get to fish no more. 
And then naturally, the routine that I had were uh, pre uh, December 27th, 2017, was I would cook fish from, for um, my si older sister and invite her over. So I was thinking, like, well, she comes over there. It's like I could reconnect with uh, her and her brother in law, who I actually lived with for a while before she threw me out, of course, um, after 38 days in the hospital. <laughs> That story you already know, um, where I come come home and there's all my shit piled up in the corner, and that's you know I don't get no card saying uh, I'm so sorry, but I have to boot you out of out of the house. I just come home and just see a pile of shit and have to infer from that that okay that's all my shit and literally up piled up in a corner. I'm like I don't think I'm wanted here anymore. So yeah, and plus I said I'd like kill myself before I ever moved into my folks house before but on the surface if we all think logically and sensibly it makes perfect sense because it will get me out of here immediately which is what I need the weather is starting to warm up it's 50 degrees out there the maniac may start sitting out on the porch again you know I'm dealing with incredible amount of noise upstairs I live basically in one little tiny room anyway and just go out you know to microwave meals go to the bathroom use the kitchen sink let the cat in let the cat out I just live in this tiny little room anyway so you know on the surface it all makes perfect sense except for it's my family so but that's what my video was was me like um, saying I'm gonna call him you know and ask him sound him out about it and see how he feels about it because he said something to me he said it just would be nice you know and he meant like a human or an animal like when he, he when he would come down from upstairs to have uh, yeah, I think he said something there to greet me you know because I, he had that dog for years and then, then it died you know and I said well you know it's, I could help him fix the place up I could, I could you know get the hot water get the washer or dryer uh, get the shower installation. It's not going to cost me that much money besides Because I'm going to be paying him. I'll just mark down, you know, I'm going to be paying him rent But it's really not going to be rent. It's just going to be stuff for him to fix up the house but he's um, Not the easiest person to get along with in the world. He keeps very irregular hours. He likes to play music a, a lot so you know but you know, I was thinking about it. It's like it's still got to be better than here you know, I just because here, then like, um, you know, I'm like, well, you know, trying to help people out hasn't really worked out for you in your life too well because they kind of got to help themselves out, and it's like it's, um, it seems sensible and reasonable, but you got to remember who you're dealing with, and um, it, I just would like to have that bullshit with my sister like resolved, and I. I want to pick her up and call her. I don't want to see her face to face. She's not going to come here and see me face to face unless I offer an invite, maybe. And then I don't know. But I would just like to get that bullshit over with. I mean, that was um, in 2017. It's, two, it's uh, about two and a half years ago since I've talked to her. And we're pretty tight for uh, our whole lives, mostly. I can remember so far back where um, she bought, she would buy me these stupid gifts when I was a kid, like no kid would like. She would, she bought me a Charlie Brown sweater with like a diagonal stripe on it, and like the it had like a tie thing in the front. If you remember the peanuts thing, which I think is an obsolete thing nowadays. I think they tried to make a peanuts movie and it was atrocious a few years ago. But she bought me a Charlie Brown sweater. It's like you're talking about decades, you know. And she might want it. She might want to kick me to the curb anyway. And she put out zero effort as far as fixing this. Besides saying I'm sorry, but this, and I'm sorry about that. But I just would like that out of my head. And you know, like that resolved. I don't want that hanging around in the back of my head all the time. And I'm sure she would too. But I'm the guy that's got to do the work always. So. Um, that's what, why I didn't put up a video yesterday is I actually made one 
And plus, every day now I take my walk, and then, like, I fall into this pit, you know, like, where I don't want to do anything. And yesterday I didn't, I didn't eat until the afternoon after waking up at, uh, 3.34 in the morning and um, just laid there in bed and I have to call the dentist and I actually got a phone call from the real estate agent guy but I missed it and then by the time I checked out my messages it was like late in the day and I was like the mood I'm in I'll call, I'll call him tomorrow you know because maybe when I talked to the Kathy person at the place she worked she was like uh, yeah you need to uh, contact this dude so, you know, but sometimes you got to listen to your gut, you know, and not your head. And my gut's kind of telling me that that's probably not a good idea, that it's like a, just because it makes sense on the surface, it could be like a utter disaster for, for me. And, um, yeah. would be good for him though man it's, it's, you know like I said that's I'm, I'm giving money to a guy I hate now that doesn't need it I'd be giving money to a guy I love and then he would be using it to fix up he doesn't have hot water heats up water to get washed up you know he uh, doesn't have a washing machine he's just very poor he, you know I have uh, uh, much more money than he does because I get those food shipments which he might be eligible for but you know who knows I'm not going to talk too much about him because it's impolite but uh, yeah I can still help him remotely but if you know if I move into another place I can still help him and throw him a little bit of money here and there you know to help him another thing about him is like just because he has the money to do something doesn't mean he'll do it, even if it's good for him. The invader cat. That's probably my cat yelling at the invader cat, or the invader cat stupidly announcing his presence in my house, but that's what's going on out there. So, anyways, another aspect of that is like if I go over to my brother's house, I can pull my cat off on it. Then my cat will get to know him. He's great with animals, loves animals. And uh, I could be like, here, you know, and just kick him some money after I leave. And like, because uh, it's a good neighborhood for a cat. It's the suburbs. There's lots of greenery. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of good. It makes sense. But that doesn't mean it's. When stuff doesn't make sense, when you're dealing with people that don't make sense, it doesn't matter that the stuff makes sense. If you can follow that, you know, because it's not logical people. Uh, so, yeah, what am I going to do today? I don't know. I'm going to take a drink of water right now if you don't mind. Thank you. See, this is one of those shirts that are awesome because they don't show the sweat stains. So I had a shirt that I wore for years that was very similar to this, but was black. That I wore in Florida. It was one of those magical shirts that doesn't show the sweat stains. But, uh, yeah, that was a tough walk. But, yeah, I mean, I'm... I just get in that black funk here every day and I'm like, man, well, I need like an immediate fucking change of scenery, man, or it's going to be the nut hat, the nut house. A nut hatch, is that something they used to say? It's going to be like a, a fucking psychiatric unit because I'm not eating and I'm not taking care of myself right, you know. I don't even remember the when's the last time I showered. Just be glad I'm not in person and you're looking at me over the screen. I mean, uh, you don't go around advertising that stuff to um, mental health people or they will throw you in the loony bin. And as far as like the housework that I was supposed to be doing, also you can tell that I've slacked off on the weights. But the housework that I'm supposed to be doing ain't getting done either. Because uh, 
Well, after I fell, my leg don't even like me walking in a straight line, let alone a crooked line and bending and picking up and doing this and doing that. So, um, I don't know. Your family is your family, you know, and there's people you know in your whole life and I live with. I, when I was like, when was that? When I was 21, something like that, 20. I was 20. So I, I remember uh, saying to uh, my foster brother, who I don't talk to anymore, and I don't think there's any resolve in that. Um, like, hey man, we both live with our sisters. We're too old to be doing that. And then, you know, he didn't take no action because their way of coping involved. And, and sometimes. So, you know, I was the guy to get the apartment and uh, the new place and everything and we managed to get along together for about five months before his, his, I was hoarding, my, hoarding food and getting tired of paying for shit when he's got the job and I don't at some point you're like that doesn't make any sense man I'm getting like that time I was getting a pittance from a disability like $422 I remember the rent was 340 so we'd split the rent and then uh, he left I'm not sure under the circumstances that he left. I don't think I threw him out. I think he just left. I know we had a big fight where there were there, we were that close to violence. Because uh, I remember that scene very clearly. Because he was like, don't threaten me. And I got up in his face and I said, I'm going to do more than goddamn threaten you. And like I said in another video, like uh, the ghosts of ass whippings past came into his eyes. This is after like I've had three spinal surgeries, but... You know, I got it right up in his face because he's like, "Don't you threaten me? <laughs> Do more than goddamn threaten you." And I'm not. I don't even. Re I blacked out after that. I don't remember like anything that was said after that. But I, he walked away. There wasn't no actual violence because that would have left marks that I would remember <laughs> on one or both of us. Because he wasn't no uh, soft boiled egg man. He was raised hard. And he knew how to fight, and he knew how to take an ass with it. I helped in that category. Um, but anyways, uh, so, um, yeah, so he left. I had $422, and I had to actually pay $340 rent out of $422, and then live on the rest. So, you know, at the time... Uh, I don't think that the internet was just getting born and I didn't have any bills I don't think I think that place was everything included because who the hell wants to live above a wig shop and so it was above the wig style center you know which was forecasting something I think but uh, I think that's why every all the bills were included in the 340 so I had $82 to eat on and to uh, buy household items and you know to buy everything out of so yeah so I, I don't know if that's ever going to get resolved because he's always been like that you know I don't know if we'll ever come to peace with anything He's not going to make any gesture involving money. Like, I'm sorry I ruined your boat. He never admitted to ruining my boat. He's like, I'm sorry, you, you know, make some kind of gesture. Besides just... Sorries are really cheap for some people. Some people, they don't like it. A sorry has... It's like I love you. Uh, some people, that's a really easy thing for them to say. It's a hard... Thing for them to back up and act out and for some people sorry is just a five letter word yeah it's just a five letter word and um, it's easy for them to say and, and uh, he's got his own hell to live through that he uh, locked himself into anyway that's his business I think I already covered it in another uh, video, but I would like to 
get that nonsense with my sister straightened out. I'm not like strong enough emotionally. That's the thing is I'm not strong emotionally right now or like if I was strong emotionally, you know, I could move into my brother's house and handle any of the usual madness uh, from my family, but so I'm fragile and I'm edgy and I'm benzo ready. So, and they're not going to bear that shit in mind. They, they haven't acted accordingly so far, you know. So it's it's a shame, really, because it's it, it get me out of here like almost instantly. And uh, like I said, man, I can sit outside anytime I want. I wouldn't be around. I hate everybody in this building. I wouldn't be around uh, people I hate. And, and people who are possibly dangerous and uh, and um, it, like my, good for my cat you know my brother takes the best care of animals that I've ever seen he loves animals takes better care of animals than anybody I've ever seen so it all makes sense on the surface but uh, yeah I tried to call him last night just to talk, just to sound him out about it, because it was interesting that he said, like, he would like to have somebody there. I would like to be somewhere else. What a quinky coincidence. I almost said quinky dink. <laughs> but I stopped myself and then had to be a douchebag and say it anyway. But I was like, <laughs> don't say that, dude. But, yeah, um, you know, it's. I, I called him up last night, and he's like, like, uh, half asleep, because he doesn't sleep normal hours, and, uh, you know, I had my own sleep disruption going there for a while, after the Stonehenge thing fell through, and I knew, I thought I was going to be out of here, because it's really hard to find a place that suits my needs, because I got the CAD, I got the walking thing, where seconds, I don't want nobody above or below me, I, I don't ever want to have to deal with the situation again. If I move into a place, like, with it where it's just me I want it to be I, you know I want it at least to be a chance of me living there for a couple of years I don't like moving nobody does and summer's coming and it's just it seems like a it seems like an idea that could be okay but then I got all the physical issues and the edginess and you know it's probably not a good idea it's like like on the surface good idea dig a little deeper not so good idea I think I could handle like living in my folks house because I don't you know bury the past it's like I think I could handle living there for a few months I'm just thinking about like a few months within a few months I could get him all hooked up and living a better life and um, he's a couple years younger than me but yeah I don't know it's uh, it's getting pretty bad as far as like the despair and um, I have to go deal with this thing I, I have to uh, go out in the COVID world whether I want to or not so you know I have to somehow do the bootstrapping thing when all I want to do is lay there and die frankly it's, it's enough of this man I don't like it no more don't like it I don't enjoy much of anything and uh you know I'm not sure what good I serve in this world besides someone to listen to talk uh, I could be doing some good there if I moved in there you know it's like I have to like do that goddamn bootstrapping thing and like and call the dentist which I was you know what I made yesterday I was like it would be a big accomplishment today if I can call even call anybody just, just feel like done you know I, I took my walk that wasn't easy 
Now if I take my walk, I just settle down. I have to rest, and then when I have time to rest, I start to think about my situation and, you know, the pros and cons of it. And while I'm thinking, utter madness is breaking loose, you know, like, let's see what time it is now. Uh, 6.47, right around 7.30. There's going to be noise up there. Yesterday, there's a sweeper running before 9 o'clock in the morning. Why the fuck do you need to sweep your floor before 9 o'clock in the morning? It sounds like a damn 7.57. And, like, the dog will be barking. Okay, it's right on cue. She's starting to stomp around up right there. See, the, her bathroom is right over here. So I actually know when she goes to the bathroom. It's not an ideal living situation. But most of the foot traffic is out in the other room. And, and I got that soundproofing door, hence shutting myself up in this room. And it's not like I can complain to the landlord about it because I got the poisonous relationship with him. And he don't give a fuck who lives here as long as they pay rent, you know. Uh, yeah, there's too much noise. Yeah, there was too much noise here when people were dealing meth and crack. <laughs> he don't care. Especially not now. Uh... Yeah, it used to, I, it used to like not bother me. Like when I think part of it is the benzo thing, but it used to not bother me. Like here, you'd hear a little bit of noise from upstairs from anybody just because of the way it's set up. But now she's got the barking dog and she's got the stamping Iron Man feet, heavy boots full of lead, tells her victims full of dread. You know. It's, it's, it's a whole other thing. It's like, uh, there's a psychological term called grandiosity, where, um, you think everything has to do with you, as far as, like, um, it also, it's, it's, I shouldn't even be trying to use that term or whatever, but it's like, um, oh, that COVID thing broke loose just, just to fuck with me, you know, it's like. Oh, you know, I drove those people out of here that were um, dealing meth, and then, and then they squatted, and I waited through the squatting thing. And even before the squatters were evicted, that moves in above me. You know, then you start to feel like, um, you know, maybe God hates me. You know, maybe, like, uh, he just... Just uh, it just amuses him to fuck with me, you know. He fucked with that Job guy really hard. Just over, you know, a little betty, a side bet he had going. He played a little crap game with uh, Job's life, turned it to crap over a side bet with Satan. So you know, so you start to feel like that. I don't know if grandiosity. Grandiosity also means like you blow everything up and you blow yourself up into something huge and important but as an aspect of that you think that um, things that happen in the universe are because of you it's um yeah um, that shows some of my uh, rust as far as my, my psychology studies But anyways, so, I guess I'll, uh, lay in bed for a little while because I, I got this thing, like, there's a, there's a word for it, but I don't know the word anymore because I haven't been treated for uh, CRPS in, like, forever. But, like, when a normal person gets tired, their legs still work. They're just tired. Unless they reach the point of utter exhaustion in a marathon where they're, like, they're collapsing and shit. When I get tired, I start to get coordination lapses. So, you know, when I went, for instance, when I walked in here this morning after taking my walk, 
I put my cane down and um, I didn't want to touch anything because I went out barehanded. I was like, well, you know, I got to face this COVID thing sooner or later. So couldn't find any gloves handy and I didn't want to waste a pair of rubber gloves. I didn't want to go out in rubber gloves. I'm like, I'm going to have to deal with this shit anyway if I'm going to have to go to the dentist and whatnot. I can wear rubber gloves when I go to the dentist, I guess. I got a mask uh, that I can wear to the dentist that the uh, aid worker got me. He actually stopped by and got one from work because I asked her to price them at Walmart for me. Um, but anyways, the point is, is I'm I walk in here and like I can't help but touch things to get to the sink to wash my hands like you're supposed to to wash all the all the uh, possible COVID-19 off your hands. The cat is like standing in my way to add difficulty to it because I didn't feed him on the way out. Uh, I just opened the window and let him in because I was already dressed and ready to go. And I'm like, I'll see you in a minute. And it took my walk. But um, the thing that happens with your coordination is your coordination goes to shit. Um, you don't just get tired. You, you, your legs don't work right anymore. It's it's different. Like uh, I can remember like being fatigued from walking for miles. And still being able to walk way back when but now it's different and they have a medical term for it but I don't remember what it is what that means is I can't walk anywhere and I have to lay in bed and listen to that and uh, I'll turn on the fan to block out some of the noise it's gonna be in the 70s today so I thought you know I looked and I saw that it was 50 degrees out at five o'clock in the morning, and I was like, oh, the warm weather finally got here. They've been threatening us with for a couple, few days. And um, then I saw thunder showers, because of course it's gonna rain, because this is Ohio, and that's kind of how it works in the springtime. It gets warm, and then it rains, you know. It was sunny yesterday, but yesterday I was in not in a good way. And, um, but today it's going to rain. As a matter of fact, if I turn the light out, there's probably going to be very little light in here, even though the sun's up. See how dark it is? I mean, this thing doesn't block all that much light. I'm not going to move it because it'll fall over. But, uh, uh there. It's, but yeah, so I'm thinking probably not a good idea to try to help my own brother even though it would make perfect sense but I'm not dealing with sensible people it has to be like on his timing like where he's at psychologically too because I borrowed a thousand dollars off of uh, my friend in his stead when he needed it for something for the house and then like uh, I was like, I'm good for it, you know, I'm good for it, you know, and he sent me to check in the mail, and, uh, I never ended up cashing the check, uh, because it got stuffed in the bottom of the mailbox, and I'm like, your check is lost in the mail, I mean, I'm just telling you, it never got here, it should have been here by now, but it got in the mailbox, and then, uh, the mailman stuffed all this junk mail on top of it, and then once I pulled the junk mail out, it was like lining the bottom of the mailbox. It's like a little narrow mailbox. And I got big giant hands. And so one day, you know, I felt a little something in there. And I pulled it up and it was all in a crumpled up mass. And I'm like, oh, here's that check I was talking about. That was like two weeks after he sent it. And after I already told him that it was lost. And then I would pay for any cancellation fees or anything like that. But um, he wasn't ready to get anything done about it at the time or to use that money anyway but you don't like to see like um, loved ones like going without hot water and stuff like that at the time I think that was he was he he's not connected to city water he's had a well and he was having well problems and he needed uh, I think I had money that I was adding to it or something like that but he has water now but he doesn't have hot water he needs a little bit of money to uh uh, it's a long story, but he's got a new hot water tank, 
but it got contaminated somehow. So he needs like at least a couple of grand, which would be no problem for me because I'm getting 1248 free and clear. I wouldn't have to be paying any rent. I would just be over here. Here's 1248. Put your savings on top of it and uh, get it done. Whack it out. But that's not how he works. You can't make people be other than what they are. You can't, you know, expect people to be different than who they are. So, I tried to, I didn't get to talk to him last night. He was, he picks up the phone no matter what because he's a fishing fanatic. And, um, he thinks that my, um, uh, my best friend will call him and he might go fishing and he'll be like yep no matter what yep doesn't matter dead sleep so he's like i'm like he, he i'll be like i'll go back to sleep or whatever like that um it's like you don't turn off the phone and you don't sleep right anybody growing up in our house is going to have issues of some kind and it's just um some people are affected differently by it. Have, some people get, when you get punched in the face, some people, you know, they get a split lip. Some people, they get a loose tooth. Some people shake it off. You know? So like that with childhoods. We all grew up in the same house, but we all got, like, different issues. Different things. But yeah, I just need to get out of here. It's like yesterday I felt that so strongly and I was like, well, you know what? I was kind of making, I said in the last video, like, like you know, I was even thinking crazy thoughts, like, you know, like moving in with my brother and I thought about it. I'm like, well, it's not that crazy if you think about it. Like on the surface, it makes perfect sense. It answers all my needs. It would get me out of here quick. It would help him out. It would take care of the cat problem. I wouldn't be paying no $350 for a cat deposit. And uh, paying cat rent. You know. And then not only that, but when I leave there, the cat can stay there. Because the cat's not about, you know, bonding to a person like I need this person. The cat's, if he's an outdoor cat, he's bonded to the neighborhood. You know. Like, that would be the shock for this cat, would be getting moved out of the neighborhood that he grew up in his whole life. Because when I got him, you could stick him, put him in the palm of your hand, you get a little, little thing. And um, that would be the culture shock for him, would be like the barrage of different environment, different smells and stuff, you know, part. Of He'd be like, you know, I remember that one guy, you know, like two weeks later. He might remember, he'll remember me if he smells me and sees me, but he's not going to, I don't have any illusions about him sitting around, you know, just saying, boy, I miss that son of a bitch that didn't have any teeth and was bald and talked all the time, you know, I don't think, it's more, that's not how cats work, you know, a dog will pine away like hell for you because they're a pack animal, but a cat, Okay, that's a loner. I just don't know what that would do to me uh, psychologically. And even if that would... Even if I put myself in a position like that where I could help if the help would get accepted and used. Or, you know, my brother is the guy, like, and I bought internet for for a year for a present and he got yelled at over it and he never used it. I was trying to turn him on to the internet like way back in the, oh, probably the late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, he was just in a, in a bad depression. He didn't want to deal with anything. And he gets real selfish when he gets in a depression. Um, and like, uh, well, he had one of his animals uh, die. One of his cats died. And, uh, 
he didn't call nobody for like five days. People were going over there and knocking on his door, like trying to find out if he's dead or not because he lives alone. And I yelled at him over it and said, you can't do that. You can't. I didn't say ghost yourself because I don't think they had that expression back then. I know I didn't say that, but I said, you just can't disappear like that, you know, because uh, you, you can at least, like, when somebody uh, calls you, you can at least call back and just call at a weird hour if you don't want to talk to nobody and just be like, I'm okay. Just let people know you're alive. You can't just drop off the face of the earth because you're depressed. You know, and I already had one brother that uh, committed suicide, so, yeah. Yeah, another cheerful video for you. But yeah, if you haven't noticed, my shirt is buttoned improperly. Like it didn't really matter to me this morning to rebutton it, but yeah. I remember that would drive my aunt crazy. But I didn't care about shit like that. So sometimes I would just um she'd be like, Oh your your collar's not straight and she she'd be like, Oh your shirt's not uh unbut not buttoned and she would she fuss over things like that. I'm like, don't start on button in my sh shirt, man. <laughs> this, 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 weird, this is weird. Just don't do that. You know, but she likes, she's like straighten out my collar. Like, your collar's not right. Like, that's what's my collar and stuff. Because um, I've never been in appearance this kind of guy uh, since I got operated on all them times. I remember dressing up like uh, John Travolta in Saturday Night Fever going to school like that thinking I was slick I had like a, a blue coat and then I had like a white um shit some kind of white long shirt underneath it but I pulled it back to cuffs so that the white would show and then I had like the white showing around the collar and everything I do remember like uh you know caring about that cause I would get a lot of attention over looks and stuff uh when I was younger and um, by younger, I mean like a kid. You know, like, oh, you're a good-looking kid. You get it, you got un, uh, unused attention from uh, the female species and the male species at times. <laughs> that guy running his fingers through my hair while I was doing the dishes, man. I'm never going to forget that. One minute we're having a conversation, and this guy's call next minute this guy's calling me Captain Hare, doing running his fingers through my hair. I'm 20 years old, living above the Wig Style Center, with uh, crazy, wavy, uh, mad, and glorious hair, and he's running his fingers through my hair, and I'm just like, dude, and I'm like freak out or anything. I wasn't a homophobe or nothing like that, but it's like, okay, man. Uh, dude, I don't remember what I said to him, but I know I didn't like hit him or anything like that. He would have, he would have broke if I would have hit him. For one thing, he was like that tall, but he wasn't me. <laughs> I just remember like, first I was shocked, like, did you just do that? <laughs> but anyways, um, but yeah. So in other words, don't care that I buttoned my shirt wrong don't care about looks uh, did not really care about um, exposing my chest on the internet until people started talking about my nipples which I thought was was highly inappropriate much more appropriate than a shirtless guy I'm like why you know and then I started to get like private messages and I'm like okay you know I must look way better on camera than I do in person <laughs> or like or somebody must be a fetishist one or the other I don't know what the deal is here I thought you know that's how we grew up in the 70s is like nobody wore shirts uh, except for the females so you know we just ran around like if the mosquitoes weren't too bad we just ran around in the suburbs in the house and I was talking about moving back into uh, shirtless like all the time and, like, and then like ironically enough uh, then I got the CRPS, which made my stomach hypersensitive, which made me, like, really envious of people that could wear shirts. But when I was a kid, it was, like, yeah, shirtless all the time.
and I think um, it was just like I don't know maybe it was a 70s thing or nothing like that but or something like that but people were like it was just like a common thing it was like nothing weird about it you know if you were went over to somebody's house and there was a guy sitting around without a shirt on there was just nothing weird about it but uh, on the internet it's a whole other deal it's a whole other kettle of fish I found out but um, anyways I guess like that's all I really wanted to talk about is um, you know that's why you didn't hear from me yesterday is I made that and I'm like I better not put that up because I don't it just doesn't that might be you know I might be having some messed up thoughts from being in a messed up situation for years and years to even think that but I was like I seized upon that idea and I was like yeah I'm looking at that idea and it works from a, almost every angle except for it's my family and they're utterly unpredictable and haven't been particularly supportive and and I have the benzo edginess and I lived alone for you know I was weighing the upsides and the downsides of it and I'm like uh, but I was like it ha it would have to be better than here anything is better than here I just I need to get out of here because every fucking day I take my walk I lay in bed and I'm just fall into this black pit of despair the main thing is I will be out of here and I can be out of here in two weeks you know I can get a mattress and a box spring sent over to my brother's house and just be out of here and then like periodic I've got the rent paid I'll have the keys still until July 1st and just periodically come back and bring stuff out of here and bring stuff out of here you know and uh, word would probably get back to the, the landlord that I was uh, not living here because of the busybodies in the building um, but the main busybody is actually the crazy guy, uh, Christopher, the PTSD guy, the alcoholic, that put the big can in the backyard, and we used to throw his beer cans out the window, and, you know, complained about me, uh, giving him money, and shit like that. Guy gave my big TV to him and all that, just to try to get him, cause, as a nice gesture, because I thought I was moving, like, months ago, and just to get him the fuck off the porch, it didn't work. Um, but now I forgot, I lost, totally lost, uh, what I was saying. Got sidetracked by too many details, which happens sometimes. And, um, I got a critic outside there, uh, tripping its displeasure at me for losing the handle on that one. But, um, yeah, that's a just, he, oh, I was saying he was the main busy body here because he actually asked the landlord, like, what is the beef between you and Steve? And I overheard the conversation because I happened to be in the living room, but I couldn't hear it too clearly. But then I asked him about it later and he was like, yeah, I was asking him like what the beef was between you two. He brought it up, you know, I was like, I saw you out there talking to the landlord is all I said. I didn't ask him like, what did you say or anything like that? Cause it's none of my goddamn business. And he goes, yeah, I was asking him and he's the one that brought it up. He said he was, you know, getting in my business about that. And then, um, I made some comment to, uh, Roy. And then Roy knocked him out to the landlord, and he was chastising me for being a busybody. But he's a busy, you know, he's at, he's getting in my business with the landlord. And I had this guy in the wheelchair um, telling the landlord that there's a leak in my apartment, like, you know, circumventing me. It's like, and I got this upstairs to deal with. Like, she's totally oblivious to it you know maybe she's partially deaf I don't know she has to know that's an insane amount of noise and like, like all I could think about yesterday is like I'd be out of here you know I don't know what I'd be jumping into or like you know it, or I'm sure I'd take some hits from it but I wouldn't be here no more you know it's like every every morning I just fall into that black pit where I can't do anything after I take my walk three fucking days in a row and um no 
now I have to go to the dentist and I haven't gone anywhere in like forever because of the COVID shutdown. And then not only that is like I have the heart thing to worry about. And I'm gonna have people like reaching in my mouth, you know? And uh, it's just like, so in other words, I think maybe I'm not thinking too clearly, but on the surface, you, know, you can see hopefully my point of view like well that would make sense because it would get me out of here and give me a change of scenery I'd have the cat problem solved uh, I'd be able to do something good for my family I might be able to reconnect with my sister I would be able to sit outside in the glorious sunshine and not be bothered by anybody anytime that I wanted to there wouldn't be three dogs living next door uh, like there is now there wouldn't be a dog living above me barking because he doesn't have a dog anymore you know um, the thing of it is, it's like, again, it's my family, and they are, yeah, they are what they are. Anyways, I'm slipping into redundancy. Let me put my glasses on and see how long I've troubled you for this fine morning. I'm here 51 minutes and 26 seconds. So, not too bad. It looks like I need a shave. And, uh, I had good lighting for this video, I think, for the most part. And I kept the hat on, which is always good. Because, you know, that, that helps you forget that I'm, I've got this going on. Which I have to take clippers to, and I bought, like, cheapo clippers, because I'm saving money. So I've been putting that off, but it needs clippered again. And, uh, yeah, it seemed, it seemed to have, if what little bits token hair is growing there, it seems to have grown back mighty fast because it doesn't seem too long ago to when I'm just sitting there doing this over and over again. I don't know about, like, uh, shaving it down. So, uh, people have told me that shave their head that, like, uh, oh, once you get used to doing that. I'm like, man, I got trouble shaving my face where I can see what the hell's going on. I don't know about shaving my head. I don't know. You know, you can feel with your hands the places that you miss, the same as when you clip your hair, if you do that. And, uh, yeah, you do something, like I said, no, it's like a force of will, getting up out of that bed and walking on a, on sore legs. And many of you all know what that's about because you got your own physical deals going on. And you know, like, uh, I'm comfortable, relatively speaking. Why the hell do I want to get up and torture myself? And then you start to, your mind starts to work on you and you're like, yeah, you start looking at your life realistically. And then that's not good. Um, you don't want to stop and that's why a lot of people like they like to have the TV on they like to have noise they like to have distraction and uh, like uh, the great Canadian uh, Norm MacDonald said it's like uh, he stumped a psychi psychiatrist once because he, he said that uh, he was using one of his habits for distraction and he was like isn't that the reason why we do everything in life is it to distract ourselves to occupy our time and he said this like he stumped the psychiatrist because he really didn't have an answer for him and it's a matter of whether the distractions that you use like say are uh, enriching to your life or not but sitting there and thinking about things and not being productive or even just thinking about things and being a writer or thinking about things like I've done for an hour and talking just sitting there thinking about things and just spinning them around in your head. It's not a good thing to do. And at the same time, like using a distraction, like uh, watching some good old fashioned porn, which there is no such thing as good old fashioned porn. A good old fashioned porn, yeah, they've improved that dramatically. Or a uh, good movie or something like that. You know, you're just, uh, getting wrapped up and distracting yourself and there's nothing wrong with that if you already 
done what you needed to do for the day or if like you're taking care of business you deserve that that time away from yourself and stuff but I to, to lay there and to, to mull over your situation to think about it and um, yeah I read something this morning like um, I was reading about the movie uh, uh, I was reading what people thought about the movie 1408 the haunted room Stephen King thing they made a movie out of it with uh, John Cusack which I didn't, I thought the beginning was awesome and then they blew it uh, but I was reading and somebody said uh, they had three different endings for it and they had an ending where he just dies looking through a hole in the wall or something like that or, they said they liked that ending because there's no such thing as a happy ending and uh, I don't really buy that because it's not so much that there's no such thing as a happy ending it's we all know um, as again the great Canadian Norm Macdonald said that we all know that things are going to end badly for us but we can uh, still triumph in the middle of that you know we can still like uh, enjoy ourselves as our bodies fall apart and as our minds become less sharp and uh, as um, the words come to us slower and the things you know as the, as we start to recede we can still uh, find enjoyment and pleasure and, and um, knowing that you've done good things and that you've lived a good life and taking pleasure in memories memories being the golden treasure in silver uh, that um, we make for ourselves when we're young and why I gave that advice uh, to my nephew to make hay while the sun is shining he's like what do you mean and I explained it to him and it's like, like uh, just don't wait around and don't wait for your life to come to you and go out and make some good memories and do some interesting things and I tried to impress that upon him when I sort of like took the role of surrogate father and we had our little adventures with the rubber raft and uh, the long bicycle rides and the time that we'd work together and he would um, uh, be fetching the shovel boss and do his cool man Luke routine and you know he's got those uh, memories with me I got those memories with him that I can think back on so in other words we all know that you know this this whole life thing it's going to get difficult it's going to get rough well, as the saying goes old age isn't for sissies so we all know where this is headed but that doesn't mean that uh, there is no such thing as a happy ending. Um, for instance, my Uncle Joe, the World War II vet, he kind of like just, it was bad for everybody else, but it was a good ending for him. He died eating at the Thanksgiving dinner. Eating Thanksgiving dinner at a table with uh, all his loved ones, all his grandchildren and great grandchildren and uh, he just died quick and one of his grandson was actually an EMT and worked in the ambulance and uh, he, they had somebody on site you just that's about it uh, you know the song the gambler says the best you can hope for is to die in your sleep I don't know that sounds like a pretty good death to me but um, it's not so much that there's that there is no such thing as a happy ending it's like that you can you can make a you can make a life where you're at peace with uh, the reality of the situation which is of course physical deterioration increased aches and pains and uh, lapses in memory and um, a decline in mental acuity and such things I hope that I hope that isn't too depressing or it's like I'm trying to sound like the great state sage kind of hard to like sound like the great sage when I failed at buttoning my shirt properly this morning 
But, um, I, just, I guess I just don't want to take my shoes off and climb and take the shirt off and climb, climb in that bed and uh, afraid of slipping into that, that horrible black hole of Calcutta mood that I've been in lately where I can't get anything done. And, um, around nine-ish, I'll call uh, the caseworker guy because he told me to call him yesterday, so I'll call him today. And um, I can do that much. And set up an appointment because he said he wanted a lot of time, like two hours. I don't know if he meant to come out and see me, to talk on the phone. You know, I'll run the idea by him that I have. Of, like, so I haven't dismissed it entirely. I just understand that it's replete with da with dangers. You know, the idea of like living at my brother's house, which used to be my folks' house, which is the house I grew up in, and um, putting my rent to some good use for a change instead of you know just lining a rich guy's pockets. I can line a poor guy's pockets who I love and like I said man pimp out the house a little bit and still have enough money to move out of there in a few months but it wouldn't get me out of here which I think that's the thing is like I feel like I'm never going to get out of here like I feel like I'm in room 1408 right now see how it all comes around this is how writing works it's like you don't get in the way of it you don't get in the way of it. You just let it coalesce on its own. You don't like plot. You don't guide. That's why I like to do stuff like without any rehearsal. I just let go. Because that's these are all first drafts, whatever I'm doing on here. But yeah, I definitely feel like I'm trapped in room 1408. I need to get the fuck out of here, man, before the place destroys me. And with the uh, sound of that dog barking in the distance, I'm going to bring this to an end. Lay in bed, upload it, and rewatch it like I always do, and laugh at myself. And uh, they uh, say, yeah, it's me. Of course I'm, of course I'm kind of goofy. <laughs> I've always been goofy. <laughs> Alright, man. Uh... Maybe I'll see you tomorrow, maybe maybe not, it just depends. Like on, uh, lately it's the everyday video thing, it's just a bit much anyways. Um, so I won't say see you tomorrow, I'll say, I'll say, I'll see you soon. Goodbye.